Hello everyone, hope you're all well and thanks very much for all the support with my videos, the likes, shares and comments, I'm very, very grateful. Today I want to speak about the immigration chaos that's still continuing here in Ireland. Up to 50 tents are now on Winston Terrace, close enough to Mount Street. I did a video last week where the whole area was completely barricaded off from Mount Street Bridge up towards the bridge of the Pepper Canister Church and then further on as well there was parts blocked off as well but today there's over 50 tents in Mount Street and then today the Irish government announced there's going to be a cut in payments to Ukrainian refugees. Now isn't this interesting? Three and a half weeks out from local and European elections and the Irish government have announced that a memo was sent to cabinet and this memo would say that the current welfare payment for Ukrainians, which is 232 euro per week, same as job seekers allowance, would, be, would now be cut to 38 and 80 cents per week. Dramatic cut in payment as well. Now back in March, they changed the payments for Ukrainians coming in to 38 euro 80, down from the 232 and as well, uh, they said they would be in state supported accommodation for 90, 90 days before they go into the private rented sector. But what they forgot to mention is a lot of Ukrainians that are working are still in receipt of up to 9,600 euro in rent payments to pay off their um, the rents as well, which again, plays into the government's narrative of keeping accommodation costs high as well, not to mention uh, the low wages that I've spoken about again. Now in Ireland, we've taken well over 100,000 Ukrainians, which is twice the European Union average. So again, the Irish being the best boys in the class for the bureaucrats and technocrats in Brussels, rather than serving the interests of the people in Ireland. And this is just pure lip service. Now this comes at the same time, as I said, the European and local elections coming up. And they said this will be brought in in about 12 weeks time <laughs> after the local and European elections. So don't fall for this nonsense by the Irish government who are trying to pretend they're doing something, move around the chairs on the Titanic while the things are getting worse because we've seen the chaos created, as I said, said with the international protection system. And uh, so many people coming down through the north, over 80 to 90% of the people coming down through the north of Ireland uh, because of the Rwanda policy being pursued by Rishi Sunak. Now this is also interesting because this is being said this is going to go in line with the European Union by the Irish government because the offering has to reduce. More spin, more, more spin. And um, as I said, this is part of the low wage regime because even today Simon Harris has said this is a sensible policy and he also said that we have to be looking at getting many of these Ukrainians into the workforce. Now many are in the workforce as well, in low pay, service jo jobs, hospitality jobs as well, and has a wage dampening effect on workers and labor costs here in Ireland while keeping profits high for these big bosses that the Irish political establishment represent in the big corporate interests. And also last week, the International Monetary Fund's Managing Director, Kristalina Georgieva, said that an abundance of labor coming across the border is benefiting the US economy, making it more competitive by preventing wages rising. Isn't that interesting coming from the IMF? The same language is coming from the European Union as well about competitiveness and their GDP figures, which are completely detached from the reality of ordinary people who are struggling to keep food on the table, pay sky high rents, and are on low wage economy. Ireland is one of the low wage economies in Europe. One in five workers is on low pay. But again, they wouldn't like you to think this when the multinationals who spark up the inflated GDP figures as well. Now, uh, over the last day as well, we've seen the uh, High Court case in Northern Ireland which found that the UK government's Migration Act in terms of the Rwanda policy was illegal. And to say it wouldn't apply in Northern Ireland. 
Now this comes at back of a case that was taken by a human rights group up in Belfast on behalf of a 16 year old boy from Iran and the context and the fallout could be far reaching for the Republic also as well because um, this might open the door again for more and more people coming in through the north of Ireland into the Republic as well uh, because Rishi Sunak said in response to this that this will not open the floodgates for more cases to be taken because of the discussions around the Windsor Framework, the European Convention of Human Rights and um, the Good Friday Agreement as well in the context of the human rights obligations as well. But again, he's playing on with this Rwanda policy, but it was mentioned that Northern Ireland could be seen now as a safe country, as a third safe country, which is just adding more chaos to the mix we're already facing here in Ireland with a lack of a coherent uh, immigration policy that's fit for purpose. Uh, and also interesting because the Remarks from a lot of the political figures has been that this won't open the floodgates to more and more people coming in through the north of Ireland, but this is exactly what's going to happen. And it's also interesting, just to refer back for a second, to the migration um, payment change that we've seen the... This never happening, for instance, with this high cost of living. We saw carbon tax increases recently. A petrol is up at nearly two euro a litre in Ireland. It's absolutely extortionate, forcing more and more people uh, to struggle and not to mention putting the cost of food up because of uh, a high cost of deliveries as well. But again, this can happen overnight, but then all these other issues where they're under huge political pressure can be kicked down the road and they're seen to do something. The people who create the chaos are now the ones trying to come up with the solutions to the chaos. But again, they represent big business, the big corporations, get all their orders from Brussels. 70% of the legislation comes through the European Union through big corporate lobby groups. Uh, it's transposed into Irish legislation. And similarly, what's happened in the European Council as well is that the Irish um, abstained on the late, latest um, migration pact in terms of that's going through the Irish Parliament at the moment. A lot of discussion and debate around what's going on and opposition to the migration pact in terms of our Ireland should be opting out of it. But also it's interesting because what they're trying to do is pretend they're doing something, abstain, well, in effect, which means nothing in practice. It's just paying lip service and playing politics with this serious situation again, as more and more people are struggling because of the fallout of immigration and it's putting more pressure on under-resourced public social services up and down the country. So uh, a lot of stuff happening here in Ireland, a lot of chaos happening. And uh, again, what's happening today is more spin and we'll see a lot more spin doctrine over the next number of weeks leading up to the local and European elections. So just be aware and uh, be fully aware what these people are up to. They're going to open the door to more um, economic migrants in terms of bringing the door in, in terms of wages. And this is who it benefits. It doesn't benefit the workers. It benefits the very rich in society. It benefits the global corporations. And it benefits the Irish political establishments who just are lapdogs to the European Union rather than standing up for the interests of the people here in Ireland. Because Article 6 of the Constitution states that the policy of the state should derive from the people and fundamentally that's where the power should lie with each and every one of us in our communities, in this local community and across the country. We need to stand up and have our voices heard and especially coming up into the local elections in the next period of time. It's vitally important that people vote for people who are on the ground, who are principled, who are standing up for the interests of the people here in the local community and the people of Ireland too, uh, in the context of the rich in society, in the context of the political charlatans out there who are trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. Uh, but again, thanks for all the support with my campaign so far. Thanks for all the support of my videos. Please press subscribe to my YouTube channel, press like to my Facebook page and follow me on other platforms as well. And I'm very grateful for all the support. So from Dublin today and this Tuesday, I'll see you all soon and take care of yourselves. Salon. Bye bye.